Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Masters of the Order. I am excited about this episode. You know we're currently voicing Lori Loud on the Loud House, currently running on Nickelodeon, but <laughs> Star Wars fans know her as Padme, but not only Padme from the Clone Wars series, she's also voiced characters in Rebels, Forces of Destiny, of course, but also in games going as far back as The Force Unleashed and Knights of the Old Republic. Yeah, Knights She's of the Old Republic, the first one. <laughs> yes, the very first one back in 2003. Uh, of course, she has narrated the, the books by E.K. Johnston, Queen's Shadow and Queen's Peril recently. I am joined by Catherine Tabor. Thank you for being here. Thank you. It's so funny. It's always like a This Is Your Life episode, which I've never, I think it was a show. I've never even seen it, but it's just it's like you're sitting there listening to all this stuff and you're like, yep, did that. Yep. Did that? Yep. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, there's a, a whole list of things on your resume that we, you know, that I could go through, but, uh, but this is a Star Wars show. So yes. I really want to focus on Star Wars. But of course, um, like I said a little bit before we started recording, uh, Catherine, that, that this is about you. I want to, I want to dive into your life and let's start off by the simple question. I think it's, this might be a loaded question, but where did you grow up? What were you, what things were you into growing up? And ultimately, you know, what was that moment in your life that kind of sent you down this path of being the actress that you are today? Um, I, uh, I was an army brat, so uh -huh. I grew up all over the place. I grew up in Arkansas, in Kansas, uh, in Germany, but, uh, I really sort of settled and feel like my home is Georgia. Um, and so I'm, I definitely feel like that's where I really became, you know, who I was. Mm -hmm. And so I'm always a Georgia girl at heart, even though we did move around a lot. Um, I tell this story, but it's really true. I, I wanted to be a princess when I was quite young. <laughs> and then I found out that you really couldn't just apply for that job. You either had to be born into it. Uh, and I was pretty sure my family was not royalty as much as I love them. Um, and, uh, and then, or you have to marry someone and that didn't right. seem like all that great of a thing when I was seven. So <laughs> I, I don't know why. I mean, at some point at seven years old, I just decided that I wanted to be an actress, um, before I could have really even known what that meant. Meant, Yeah. But, um, but I did, and I've always loved science fiction and fantasy. Uh, I was an avid reader as a child. I love fairy tales. Um, you can see behind me, my office is Alice in Wonderland. And there's some other fairy tales stuff too. That's a little Snow White yeah. going on right there. Um, but I love stories. I just love stories and storytelling and uh, sci-fi fantasy stuff uh, was always more interesting to me than the real world. So <laughs> Nice. So, so when you were seven and that decision came up, did you start doing classes? Did you, when, when did you, what, how old were you when you first got into your first gig? Uh, I started doing modeling at a pretty mm. young age. Um, this is not, you know, like New York city runway modeling. This right. is like, you know, the local mall, yeah, <laughs> the, the, lo the, lo picture. the local yeah. newspaper. <laughs> um, I actually have some clippings. I just, uh, like found of like some of my mall shots for, I can't remember what the name of the store was, but it was like one of those classic stores that's in every mall and i'm i'm looking like really you know serious i've got my little hat yeah, tipped down yeah. um but yeah so i started modeling and i also started reading a lot of plays um i didn't grow up in situations where there was a ton of theater going around or, and there were a lot of opportunities uh, mm -hmm. and so i just like i do like i have in my life with a lot of things i'm like well what would someone do even though I have no idea. And so I just kind of do what seems logical. So I watched uh, movies. I started reading a lot of plays, like I said, and then the modeling was something that uh, I did quite a lot of, although again, not very impressive. But yeah. so that, that was my getting used to being in front of the camera. And then I started, um, as soon as I was kind of old enough, uh, which would have been high school, driving to like the bigger city to work on 
productions of actual things that were going on as background or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and I did some of those, uh, you know, weekend workshops that you find all across small town America of, you know, like the acting workshop when, (laughs) when the big casting director comes to town. Um, so I did some of that stuff too. And then, uh, honestly, when I was a full grown adult, I, met up with some other people that wanted to be actors and we drove across the country to Los Angeles knowing absolutely nothing. <laughs> right. And that's, yeah. that's the common story I feel like. So, you know, acting obviously in front of the camera is the first thing you think of when someone says they want to pursue acting and stuff like right. that. And it's rare that they end up doing a lot of voiceover work and in, in yeah. animation work. So how did you get into that? It was a total fluke. Uh, and I say this too, like I, th- I, there are some other actors and actresses in the voiceover world who say they grew up listening to cartoons and I know they always wanted to do it. Like Hardy mm-hmm. Waldron, um, and my friend, James Arnold Taylor, he did yep, radio absolutely. and all this stuff. I didn't know what voiceover was. And I don't say that to be coy because it's all around us. So it's like, how could you not know what it was? But I really didn't think about it. Um, and it was an agent, uh, actually just recommending to a manager at the time that that they should look into voiceover for me because I was well spoken and I did accents and you know that's got a favor meeting with my first agent who's Sandy Schnarr and uh it was just crazy like uh yeah. I didn't even know what I was doing and she spent the bulk of the beginning of the meeting telling me how hard it was to break into voiceover because that's another sort of thing that people don't understand so many people are like oh I want to do voiceover that seems easy and like I'll make mm-hmm. some extra money but the people working in voiceover uh who are doing a lot of work whose names you already know they do so many different things that that they don't need new people yeah you know like and that's not to say that new people can't get more work. And these days with the way uh, everything is done online, new people can definitely break in. But if you have a D. Bradley Baker or a James Arnold Taylor or a Tara Strong, and they can do all of these things right. that they do, they do, you know, three or four or five or whatever different voices for something. And they do from the baby up to the old lady. Um, which Gray Delisle, for instance, does on the Loud House for us. She's Lily. I bet this piece of hair is sticking out. It's driving me crazy. <laughs> Fuck that. I'm just kidding. Okay. Um, I'll paint it out. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, but so you just, you know, you you have to bring something new to the table. So that was what the agent was basically telling me. Like, you know, here's why you're not going to probably break in. Sweet new girl who's never done this before. Yeah. Um, but then she gave me a chance to read. And uh, I will never forget it. I was in the lobby, you know, probably with like some cute little business outfit on. Um, and she's like, here's some here's some sides, which is the dialogue. Mm-hmm. Um, why don't you take a look at this and we'll give you a chance in the booth. And I was like, OK. She came back literally, I think, 60 seconds later and was like, you ready? And I inherently was like, oh, this is a test. And that's uh. when my that's when my um, uh, never tell me the odds spirit came in. I was like, yeah, I'm ready. Let's go. And, uh, and I think just, I think there was something about that, that like, I was quickly able to know what things were supposed to sound like. And, and that's where the acting comes in. And, uh, I did what I guess was a good job because by the time I was in my car downstairs, she was calling and saying, we'd like to work with you. And, um, and then within about, I think about maybe two weeks, uh, I had the audition for Knights of the Old Republic. And Mm -hmm. I had no idea what it was. I had no idea how, what of a big deal it was, Uh, but I knew Star Wars and uh, they didn't give you a lot of information. So I didn't know that Zalbar was a Wookiee, but I read it like he was my dog. (laughs) And I was just like, you know, a little Han Solo, a little Indiana Jones Mm -hmm. for this, Mm -hmm. for this character. Um, And, uh, And then I got it. And when I was going in, Sandy, my lovely agent was like, maybe don't tell him it's your first job. Um, (laughs) So, but luckily I was working with Dara O'Farrell, who I'm sure many of your Star Wars uh, listeners and watchers Um, already know because he's all over the Star Wars universe. And he was so great um, and just a great first person to work with. And uh, he hands me the script the first day and it's like, it's thick. 
Oh, because man. it's a game, you yes. know. It's and a I was huge like, game. "Oh, I was like, I should take it home and learn it tonight." And he was like, "No, <laughs> you, don't, you don't need to learn it. It's fine." Um, but yeah, so it was a great experience. And again, I just think it's, I, you know, things are things happen as they're meant to be. And I will say this for other people who are like trying to do something that is a little bit of, you know, a long shot or a dream mm -hmm. and you and you feel like you've been plugging away. At the time that this happened and I got the voiceover agent without trying, I was working really long hours at a, a clothing store and trying to rush between auditions. I had already had all kinds of odd jobs. Um, I like did car shows. I, you know, I was just about to do that thing. I don't know if they do this anymore, but at the time there would be mainly girls who would go to bars and like pass out samples of things you know oh, um, wow. so it had like a you know it had like a, a name with the word model in it but like it was not very you know it wasn't very prestigious you know right, it was like right. oh great i'm going to this bar tonight and i'm supposed to look cute and be like would you like to try a sample of this oh, whatever I know what you're talking about yeah. yeah so i was just this close to doing that and then out of nowhere i got a voiceover agent and then I got Knights of the Old Republic, and then the rest, as they say, is history. history yeah. Well, let's get into that history because <laughs> Star Wars being, because, you know, 2003 now, do you remember what year the audition was? Was it that same it year? It was or? pretty close, yeah. yeah. And because they had actually been trying to cast that role, apparently, I found out later for a while. And we're just mm. having a hard time finding someone who sounded young. But I don't know. I don't know. It was just. You know, Mission Mission's a great character. Yes, yes, and that was between. So that that was roughly between you know the release of Episode Two and Episode Three, yeah. and yeah. of course, like most fans, we thought Episode Three might be the last thing we get of Star Wars. Yeah, isn't that right? crazy to think about that now? I know, isn't it? Okay. Yes. So let's go back to like you said, your sci-fi love. Um, what it is about? What is it about Star Wars, particularly? that you that you were such a fan of is there anything particular that drew you yeah. into that franchise um i love star wars because of the whole good versus evil um mm -hmm. and and also just the idea that uh there's more going on in the world than meets the eye um, yeah. in this case the force um that there are things that are bigger than all of us and they're important and they they run through us and they connect us um I loved, you know, I know that this is controversial today um, because there weren't as many female characters as there were male characters, but that never really bothered me um, because I just felt like Leia um, and other characters, Mon Mothma, all mm -hmm. of these characters were just strong and important and at the table, literally. Yeah, right. and, I, and I really liked that. I felt like it didn't divide people into damsel in distress or this. It was a lot more, you know, just you've got these really cool characters. Um, I love the love story. Um, I love, you know, Han and Leia's chemistry. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. So, and then I just, you know, I just love, I mean, I love the character of Leia, I gotta say, like, yes. she was just like confident and uh this tiny little thing who like sticks her face up and says really you know <laughs> um and i love that um so and and then on a you know another note i just like the costumes and stuff too <laughs> absolutely absolutely it's well, perfection said, yeah yeah <laughs> well you said what's funny is you said you wanted to be a princess when you were younger yep. lo and behold you actually do play yeah. not only a princess sometimes with Leia, but actually yeah. the queen. Yes. Uh, queen Amidala. So let's go to Clone Wars. Um, did you have to, did you get invited to be that character? Did you have to audition for that character? How did, how did Padme come about? I was still quite new at the time. Um, and again, that world is very competitive. Mm -hmm. And so I wasn't on the list of the casting director, which was Andrea Romano, the amazing legendary oh, yeah. andrea romano but she didn't know me um but sandy again this agent that i just you know i don't i don't know what it was she saw in me but i'm eternally grateful to her uh she called andrea and said you actually have to add this girl you have to see her she is padme 
And so Andrea trusted her and, and brought me in. And uh, I didn't really understand even what it was for, what it was about. I mean, I knew it was Star Wars. Um, and I was still, you know, definitely new enough to be really kind of nervous about the whole thing. But I just went in and uh, did my thing and did what I do acting wise, which was try to make it my own. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and then I didn't hear anything. And I, you know, you really want a lot of jobs that you audition for, but there are yeah. just those few that you really, you just feel like it's got to be mine. It's got to be. <laughs> it's got to be. What's wrong with these people? Um, but I think I was also new enough to like not really be cocky and think that it was going to be mine. But right. I, I literally prayed, wished on pennies, all of this mm -hmm. stuff, you know, and it, and it was funny because I remind myself of this to this day. I very distinctly prayed to the sky, to God, you know, like, look, if I get this, I promise I will always remember to be grateful. <laughs> and I will tell you over the course of the, I think 12 years now, um, uh, there have been days when I've been annoyed by something, uh, you know, or just felt irritated about some aspect, like, I don't know, maybe I wasn't in enough episodes or, you know, whatever it yeah, was that day. Yeah. And, uh, and I immediately feel convicted and I'm like, Nope, I am grateful to be a part of this. I'm grateful to have had this opportunity and I'm grateful to play this character who, uh, that's the other thing about Padme for me is that I just, I just love the character. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it, you know, it, it, it it's painful to me to think about someone playing her and ruining her. <laughs> <laughs> so no um, that, yeah i think everybody would agree that 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 voice is is uh ingrained in everybody um the padme voice uh is yours uh and I, so did you during that audition did you come across any of the other current cast members did you audition at all or I, against the producers all the time the producers were there dave was there henry gilroy was there uh andrea romano was there and there were all kinds of actors you know in the hallway and sitting around yeah. i remember i went outside in the parking lot because i just felt like man this is stressful like <laughs> um and honestly usually at voiceover auditions people are, are quite nice to one another um they're better at least faking being nice than on camera people are. This felt like a halfway in between because there were a lot of mm -hmm. on camera people there. And I mean, you definitely at auditions, now we're doing most of them from home, but back in the day when you would be in rooms, I mean, you would get daggers thrown at you, especially, oh. especially oh, the girls. Yeah. So I think I was yeah. like, I'm just going to go in the parking lot because <laughs> you all, you all are mean. Oh, um, uh, you know, and, and so I remember distinctly walking kind of like outside, um, and it was, it was dusk or night or something. It was not daytime. Um, and then they called me and I went in and it happened pretty quickly. And, um, and then, and then, uh, about, I think maybe a month later, um, I got the call from Sandy and she was, I was dog sitting for a friend. I'll never forget, um, for Mr. Max, who is no longer with us. Cause this wow. was a while ago. Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, I was dog sitting, so I wasn't even at my house and, but she called and she was like, Hey, Padme. And I was like, shut up. Oh, no. shut up. She was like, no, really. And then I screamed and, um, yeah. And then, That's like I said, then fantastic. the rest is, is history. And, yeah. you know, I, re I, I kind of remember like one of the first times I went in, James Arnold Taylor remembers it more. He and Ashley um, and Matt and some of the other people had already worked together um, a couple of times mm -hmm. before I came in. And um, but yeah, it was just exciting. Like it was exciting. And again, I was new enough that I remember thinking, don't get fired, don't get fired, yeah. don't get fired. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> But it's also, I feel like there's, you know, there would be some of that pressure, a new, an animated Star Wars show. We never really gotten that at that point. And in the, in the, in the way the animation was that they were doing was very new, right? The 3D right. animation. You know, I don't, is there, is there a sense of like, is, is, um, did you guys know that it was going to be this good? I don't think I knew anything. I mean, <laughs> I, I really didn't know anything. We had people like Tom Kane and James Arnold Taylor and Dee Bradley Baker who had worked on shows before um, and who in right. fact were already sort of legends and knew what they were doing. Um, and so I think for them, 
that it felt more comfortable. I really feel like for for Matt and Ashley and I, we were all just like, I don't know what's happening here. <laughs> Is this how you do it? Um, although all, all three of us came from an on camera background, right? So we all had had acted before, and Ashley had done a lot. Matt had done a lot, so it wasn't like we were total rubes. But mm -hmm. just to be standing in this room with these people, you know, with these microphones and and then, you know, the the, the legends that we had, you know, oh my gosh, Corey Burton. Um, yeah. These people not only are great, but they're so talented and funny that they during sessions, you know, as soon as it stops recording, there's all this stuff happening with these really talented people. And suddenly they're doing, you know, a James Cagney impression. And then this guy over here is like coming back with something else. And so there was really a lot of just wonder and magic. And, and yeah. again, like, what am I doing here? And please don't get fired. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but but I trusted in my acting. I have to say, like I really, for me, yeah. that's always. I've always felt like this is what I was supposed to do. Um, so Great. I've never really had a lack of confidence about that. In fact, if anything, I'm more like if, if I don't get something I think I should, I'm like, what is what? wrong with these people? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Idiot. <laughs> Whatever. What's the line like from Julia Roberts from Pretty Woman where she's like, big mistake. Big mistake. Huge. Yes, that's exactly <laughs> right. Yeah. So you've already revealed, I feel like, a lot of behind the scenes uh, details, you know, uh, of the process. But is there anything el else that's specific to Star Wars as opposed to maybe your other uh, voiceover gigs or other acting gigs that is a little different that uh, maybe we may not know about? I think for me, the thing is, is that my career up until now uh, is Star Wars. I mean, it's basically Star Wars with some other things peppered in there, oh, but right. it was for, you know, from the time that I started, uh, the majority of things that I was working on were related to Star Wars. Um, and even, you know, now with just doing the last two books for EK, um, you know, mm -hmm. again, uh, it just, it, it's, it's a huge part of my life. And, um, you know, I don't know if there'll be more Padme in, in other things. <laughs> uh, I, I've played other characters too, so that's been great. Yes. There was a time, uh, Dara O'Farrell, back to Dara, where I played a character in a mobile game called Star Wars Uprising, and I played this character, Riley, who's actually quite different from, from Padme or Leia <clears throat> or Numa or Vet, any of my Twi'leks. Yes. Um, play a lot of Twi'leks. Uh, but I remember I got into that session and it was remote, so Dara was just in my headphones. And he was like, you again. And I was like, yeah. And, and he was like, I, he said, I honestly was like, can I actually hire her, hire her for another Star Wars project? Cause he, cause, cause I'd been on so many in different characters. And I was like, yeah, yeah, you can. Yeah. You, you can keep hiring me. And again, I, I just feel like uh, one of the things that helps when you're doing science fiction and especially something like Star Wars is if you have a love of that world and an understanding for it, you can, play in that world authentically. Whereas I think people who come and don't, don't know that stuff and they're like, Oh, it's that weird space movie or whatever. Yeah. They think, they think that they have to be very dramatic or very this or very that. And it's not that um, it's, you know, it's just real, but right. there's tauntauns and, you know, speeders going <laughs> yes, around. That's right. That's <laughs> right. So after all these years now, you, like you said, 12 years, I think roughly 2008, I think is when, the first season of Clone Wars landed, uh, or the Clone Wars movie came out first. Um, has I mean, has Padme to you evolved, and how much has she evolved? Even though, because we are restricted in her timeline, right? I mean, we you know basically that there's that ten to fifteen years that we know about her life, um, but you voiced her with you know additional material like the books and Forces of Destiny and stuff like that. How much has Padme actually? evolved and what really what qualities have really attracted you more to her yeah so what was really interesting about the character uh, of padme was uh, where we were coming in with clone wars was kind of you know mm -hmm. uh, an area where you you didn't know as much i mean you knew but you didn't get to see so i think that she evolved with the clone wars um and i think most fans would really agree with that yeah. um just because you got to see you got to see part of what made her tick you got to see what makes anakin tick too um and i know that we we had ideas about that but you got to see 
uh, their love relationship and um, things that you know, as time passed. Um, and yeah. then, and then in, in season seven, um, when we got to do that moment, mm -hmm. I mean, that was like, whew, awesome. I wish everybody could have been in the room for that. It was really cool. Um, but yeah, Dave was always so great about letting, you know, me have a real voice for her yes. and who she was. So I felt, cause I felt like I always knew who she was and, you know, it's strange how people, so, so many people think that they, you know, that they know everything about everything Star Wars. Um, and everyone can have different feelings about different people um, because that's just life. You know, right. sometimes you're right and sometimes you're wrong. But I always contended that she was not a pacifist. So mm -hmm. I loved mm -hmm. uh, I loved Clone Wars because we really got to explore that. And then we had the amazing character of Satine, who is a pacifist. Right. Um, uh, but so when people would call Padme a pacifist, I was like, you're not seeing her. She she believes in diplomacy. She says, I put my faith in diplomacy. But she also knows that there are times when that breaks down, um, mostly yeah. because of people. Um, and that then there are times that you have to fight, literally. Um, and I love negotiations, right? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and, you know, and there's moments in Clone Wars where she picks up the blaster and is like, you know, let me add him, yes. uh, especially when it involves protecting someone that she loves um, or someone that she feels is an underdog. Uh, and so I, I love that about her. I love that we got to explore that more. And then in Queen Shadow and Queen's Peril, the books, I mm. definitely got to explore more um, yes. because we get to see her at different ages, uh, which was really fun. And also um, just some of the things that EK did uh, with explaining you know, the headdresses and the elaborate costumes and giving them valid reasons um, uh, that they're aspects of armor or mm -hmm. aspects of weapons. And I yes. just thought, oh, I remember reading that and I was like, that's so cool. It so. is. And her relationships <laughs> with her handmaidens, too. Yeah. You don't get that in the movies. Yeah. No, and you don't and really I, get I, it in yeah. the Clone Wars either. No, you don't. Um, you don't because of the sort of time period that we're in. And I, I love, I loved, I loved, I love all that. So there could basically never be enough Padme content for me personally. Even when yeah. we did Forces of Destiny, um, which was a show designed, you know, more for kids to teach sort of good lessons, lessons in yeah. in quick, you know, quick little snippets. But it was still so well done and so. Absolutely. So you know, Padme and Ahsoka and Anakin are that episode we have together, like. It's so simple, but it was like so great, such a great moment. Um, Absolutely, yeah. I, lo I love good. Good Star Wars is filled with great moments. Mm -hmm. It is, and I and I'll I'll speak for a lot of Star Wars fans, I'm sure. But I think the the reason I love the character of Padme so much is you really, especially with Clone Wars, because I don't think you fully get her story in the movies. Um, it's because that's really Anakin's journey. Um, yeah. The Clone Wars give you so much context and so much uh, personality and, and qualities because you then understand where Leia gets yeah. those things, right? Yeah. And I got to say, you've done, you, you, you continue to do a fantastic job. Even when I read, I was so thrilled when I got the audiobooks and I was like, oh my gosh, Catherine's voice in this. This is perfect. Um, it's, it's amazing. And, you know, thank you for how much work thank you, you put into this. Thank you. Like I said, I, I wish that there, I always wish that there would be more every time I think that there's not, there is, um, yeah, yeah. and I jokingly, but I'm only half joking or even less than half joking. I still hope that like star Wars, you know, episode 21, um, Padme returns and she has been <laughs> safely tucked away somewhere this whole time because she was on to everything that was going on and she's really been watching and orchestrating in a different way this whole yes. time for the oh, force wow. for good. So yeah. Yeah. Um, that, that's my, that's my hope. I'm just throwing it out there. Yeah. Well, I'm not sure <laughs> you, if you knew or not, but I got, I got really excited because in the comic series, there's a Vader comic series out there mm -hmm. and one of the last shots of one of the issues was a shot of Padme. And, oh, I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. Because oh. Vader's, Vader's trying to find out, you know, this was shortly after episode three, and he's trying to figure out what happened to her. Uh, I'm sorry, actually, this is more like around episode four. And because uh, he's finding out Luke is his son, and he's 
so there's a shot of at this end she he runs across padme you find out spoilers if anybody we, we talked about this on the show before but uh you find out it's actually sabe and oh, she wow. looks so much like her you know vader didn't yeah. really know but anyway yeah it's pretty well, pretty strong moment they ever thought well is padme back i still have hope that she is mm, star right. wars 2021 that's right that's right <laughs> um one one thing I like to wrap up our our discussions with, um, and hopefully you've thought about this. Maybe you haven't, because I know it might be Padme related <laughs> still. But is there a is there a is there a dream Star Wars project that you've thought about? Is there what's that phone call you would like to get that says you're you're able to do this Star Wars project, which is your dream? Have you thought about that at all? Well, so this is a funny story, and I'm I think I'm not. I may have said this once somewhere else, but I'm not sure. I had like a little wish box um, where I had written down many years ago. I was doing Clone Wars, but I had written down um, that I wanted to be in Star Wars 7. Because mm. it had been announced that they were making a movie, but at the time, no one knew anything about it. Um, so it was like a super like long shot dream. So I had this little card in my little box that I had written. And then I I ended up going in and doing vo voice work, which a lot of other Clone Wars cast yeah, got to do yeah. um, and didn't really think I would end up in it because there were so many more. There were stormtroopers and, you know, um, at the time there weren't female stormtroopers. Um, and uh, and and so I was just like, oh, we're not going to hear me. But you do, you end up clearly hearing me because they used me for the, uh, the, the Starkiller base scene. Um, and so I'm saying, I say something like, you know, charging the weapon, sir. And you clearly hear, ah. I remember James and Arnold, James Arnold Taylor and I saw it together for the first time and we're sitting in the theater and we both were like, what? He was like, that was you. Um, and, and other people are like, that's Padme. Um, so the oh, moral man. of that story was, though, I had written... I want to be in Star Wars 7. And it's not the first time that I have realized dream bigger and be more specific. <laughs> right. So yeah. I, I would say from here on out, it would it would definitely because I started in on camera and that's what I've been doing more of um, this last these mm -hmm. last couple, not this last year, because uh, there hasn't right. been a whole lot going on. No. But these last couple of years, I've been focusing on that a lot and getting to do some stunts and, and different things that I really, I just really love. Um, so yeah, like, uh, it, it is a dream still to be in an on camera Star Wars project at some point. Mm. Um, yes, I would love it to somehow be related to Padme. I don't know, like I said, oh, um, yeah. again, if my episode 21 or it could even be episode 17, 17 episode 14. Yeah. Yeah. That long. yeah. Um, uh, because then <laughs> she could be older than she was when she met her alleged a demise. Legend, yes. Um, Faked her death. Yes. yes. Or or maybe some distant relative or a Twi'lek. Um, I definitely would, would be happy to play a Twi'lek somewhere too. Um, well, I just told you, Salve's alive. Yeah, exactly. She, she looks very similar to... <laughs> Padme, I'm telling you. <laughs> so yeah, so that I mean that that's that's definitely it. And I I got to meet George a couple of times, but it definitely still would have been fun um, to get to work with George actually yeah. oh, directing man. me. Oh, so you <laughs> you didn't get a chance to work with him during the Clone Wars? Or? I did. I mean, we we met him and he oversaw stuff, but he yeah. never came in. And you know, it would, Dave was our director. Yeah, absolutely. And thankfully, and amazing. Um, and even on detours, George oversaw stuff, but he wasn't mm -hmm. in there. You know, like I just imagine, you know, on the films that you know, still like you see those stills, oh, yeah. you know, oh, him yeah. like, kind of thinking behind the camera. You know, oh so, gosh. So someday, you know. I know all of it seems unlikely, but again, I've, I've started to, uh, realize like, again, dream big, you might as well. Might as well. And, and write more details, just write more yes. details. You, you, you. Honestly, in that, in that instance, I have to say like really and truly be more specific and, and have faith for bigger things. Absolutely. This is a lesson I need to learn myself. Have faith for bigger things have because faith, they, and it will they happen. can happen. Yeah. And when, when you, when you, have something like that and then and then it happens and it's the small aspect like that you wrote and you were like why didn't i say lead role yeah. why <laughs> <laughs> but i'm telling you it's funny how again just wrapping this all thing back it goes back to i love what you said at the beginning like you know you dreamed of being a princess when you were younger and yep. 
it, dreams come true in a way, you know, if yeah. faith happens and it, things happen for a reason and yeah. you just have to have that belief and that faith and it'll, it'll come through. So it's, uh, it's amazing. And I, and I will continue to follow your career and, Thank you. uh, hopefully well, as, as you know, I told you I'm a person of faith and I know mm -hmm. that you are too. And, yep. um, I, I do really have a belief that if you have a dream in your heart, um, that's good. I don't mean like that. You're going to like, go steal a Lamborghini this right. does not apply for that. <laughs> yes. But if you have something in your heart that you feel like you're driven to, and you really have a heart for, I, I think there's a reason. And absolutely. I think it will work out and you'll understand more later. And this is still happening for me in life too. Like, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. um, but things, things work out and you're like, Oh, that is not how I saw that happening. That's right. But it happened and it, and it is that, and it's even better usually yes. so it is you know uh you know i yeah because i could totally relate i was 20 years ago i started working for this company i was the third hire and small little company and now we have 30 people and we're producing all kinds of stuff and you know because i was i had that thought too of do i need to go to la to, yeah. to work in the production world well I had faith that I could do it right here. And, and look, now I'm talking to you across yep. the cameras, you, right? So, you are lucky. No, I'm kidding. I am lucky. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> um, gosh, Catherine, I can go on. I do have one, you know, I didn't send you this. So I have one quick question that I just thought of. Sure. I, I need to settle this for all the Star Wars fans that are listening. Uh-oh. Is, <laughs> is Dave Filoni George's clone or not? You know that they make us sign NDAs, and um, okay. I, I just don't. <laughs> I just don't think I I, 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 I can promise. You, I think he's the clone of George Lucas, but you know that's. I actually don't believe that he's a clone of George Lucas, okay. but I do. I do believe that there's some maybe shared midichlorians or something going on there. Oh, I love where you <laughs> went there. That's fantastic. That's uh, that's good. I like that. Okay, well, I. Can go on and on, but thank you so much, Catherine, for, for thank joining you. us. Thank you for having me. This has and been fantastic. everyone may the force be with you. But even more importantly, stay on the light side. Stay on the light side. Great. You can go and check out all the things that she's doing at CatherineTabor.com. And of course, like I said, at the front, she is on Nickelodeon right now playing Lori Loud. And I uh cannot wait to hear more Padme from you in the future. So or or any Star Wars, to be honest, any Star Wars. Thank you, Catherine. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Take care. May the force be with you.